Come on, Ethel, you expect me to believe that this is the updated 450X? Oh, I mean this is the updated 450X. This still looks like the original 450. I mean, from that to this was a significant step up, while this isn't. Now, according to Aether, the motor continues to produce the same peak and continuous power. And despite the three or four kilo weight gain, it is said to be just as quick as this one. But according to our V-Box data, this new Gen 3 is marginally quicker to 40 and 60 kmph. But in the sprint to 80 kmph, it is a whole second quicker. Clearly, there's some more juice going into the motor. And that's because it packs a bigger battery. What you can't see is the larger 3.7 kilowatt hour battery that Aether has managed to squeeze beneath the flow. The consequent clean range in Eco goes up from 85 to 105 kilometers. However, be prepared for a shock because the larger battery and improved battery optimization, the Aether 450X managed to return a phenomenal 142 kilometers on a single charge during our test. That's the highest range figure we managed to achieve on any e-scooter that we've tested. One kilometer more than the Ola S1 Pro and almost 30 kilometers more than the TVS iCube S or the Bajaj Chetak. Now, this wasn't a case of hypermiling and it wasn't obviously done by me. While other e-scooters like the iCube S and the Chetak have active and prominent region capabilities, the Aether has a subtle active region and you can force the region slightly more by simply rolling the throttle the other way. The advantage of going this route is pretty simple as you can coast freely at reasonable speeds for longer. While this is detrimental if you're living in a hilly region as you won't be able to recover as much charge back, but that is for a separate video coming soon on Zigwheels. Despite the larger battery, a complete charge does take about the same amount of time. The 0 to 80% charging time has gone up by almost an hour though. Again, Aether's not so immediately noticeable update comes in the form of grippier MRF rubber and a wider section tire at the rear. And even though the suspension components remain the same, the tuning has been altered to factor in the extra weight. Please. The small tweaks are making a noticeable difference to the riding experience of the 450X. Firstly, the rounder profile of the tires makes for a smoother and more composed handler. No longer is the 450X tipping in too rapidly and as a result, it is a more relaxed commuter. However, personally, the sharp handling is something that made the 450X exciting and the slightly matured approach is detracting a bit of its youthful spirit. Thankfully, the grip levels on offer are far superior and something that I can get behind. No longer is it feeling jittery or slippery and current Gen 2 owners can possibly fit these new tires once they run the current ones into the ground. Another major benefit of these new shoes is the improvement in braking performance. The added traction allows you to go harder at the levers without fearing the front locking up and washing away. The rear still does squeal a bit and sidestep if you force it to, but the overall feel is more promising and confidence inspiring. As a result, it does stop a bit shorter from 60 kmph. Not all of the updates have had a positive impact. The revised suspension tune does make the ride a bit firmer, as it isn't able to absorb the bumps and undulations with as much finesse as before. As a result, it does make commutes a bit irritating and there's not much you can do to make the ride plusher other than dropping the tire pressures down by a couple of PSI. However, this too will have a small but noticeably negative impact on the range you will be able to achieve. Now the new 450X arriving in the same three colors as before with no new shades to spice things up does make me a bit sad. Whereas, these new mirrors, which are wider, are definitely a big boon and something that I recommend all Gen 2 owners to get as soon as they can. From what my friend who has bought this scooter has been told, they are a bit pricey. However, in the long run, their benefits are obviously 
going to pay off. Lastly, the updated RAM and memory of the console. <laughs> memory is RAM. <laughs> are supposed to make the connectivity features run quicker. To test it out, we fed in the same destination and timed how quickly the two were able to calculate and show the route to the same place. And the results are on your screen. Like I mentioned right at the start, the Gen 3 doesn't feel like a Gen 3. It's more like a Gen 2.1. The larger battery does make the scooter slightly peppier and the range benefits are quite apparent. And when you factor in that all of these updates come in at a premium of just 5,000 rupees, that isn't quite too steep. However, given the current electric scooter space, the 450X doesn't feel as wowing or as enthralling as it used to. It still retains its sporty edge over the iCube and the Chetak, and we've never faced any troublesome small but recurring issues like we did with the Ola S1 Pro. So as a sporty scooter, the 450X still remains the best electric alternative to internal combustion. So that's it, that's our first video with the new Aether 450X. We will be having a couple of feature videos as well as long-term reports coming soon on your screens. So make sure to click that bell icon and follow us on Instagram as well. Thank you for watching.